It's one of the trends of the swinging 60s to find dining rooms in the clouds where it's not chips with everything but views of cities. Here at London's post office tower, the restaurant rotates 34 floors high with a cocktail bar immediately above and kitchens on top. It's no longer a matter of eating out, but eating high at the top of the tallest building in Britain. And for background, a constantly shifting view of London and its surrounding counties. It's one of the latest of the twin purpose towers of Europe. In Germany, Stuttgart's tower is a TV transmitter with a double-deck restaurant in a crow's nest some 500 feet high. In West Berlin, there's the Funkturm, a radio tower close on 500 feet high in the British zone of the divided city. Its restaurant, halfway up, offers diners views of the other side of the Iron Curtain, as well as the new road network of West Berlin. Rotterdam has its 350 feet high Euromast, a navigation tower for ships using what has become Europe's busiest harbour, the Europort. The mast's restaurant and grill room are at the 300 feet level and give an airman's view of a mariner's world and of a city whose rebuilding from the ruins of war the mast symbolises. Of course, the French will say that they thought of it first with the Eiffel Tower, nearly a thousand feet high and completed in 1889. It's still the pride of Paris, but you have to go much higher than the restaurant on the first stage for the best view. And the Eiffel's restaurant is static, unlike London's top of the tower, which goes round three or four normal meal, once every 23 minutes. Here you satisfy your appetite 520 feet high, 150 feet higher than St Paul's, with a pigeon's eye view of the capital that's a revelation even to Londoners who thought they knew their own city. Crossing from the stationary to the moving part of the restaurant presents no problems, but for waiters it's sometimes puzzle find the customers whose table has moved since the waiter took their order. At the foot of the tower, the restaurant's booking office. A tourist attraction, as well as an airy for gourmets, the restaurant serves 800 lunches and 1,300 dinners every week. But first, the high-speed lift to the 35th floor and the cocktail bar, a lunchtime rendezvous for tourists and London businessmen alike. Prices are high. They have to be if this restaurant is to pay its way. The rent alone is £20,000 a year, and a further 11.5% of every bill is payable to the post office, as well as a four shillings charge for each customer's ride in the lift. It all goes to relieve the taxpayer's bill for running the £8 million tower. For these diners, London's going round and round at 10 feet a minute, and given a head, and of course a stomach for heights, you may get a good look at Tower Bridge with your soup and pick out Windsor Castle while on your minute steak. Space is a problem for the restaurant whose wines have to be kept in the tower basement, where there's also the main food store. Supplies called up daily by the chef have to be airlifted before nine o'clock each morning. After nine, the tower's two lifts are kept busy on post office business. At the top, 36 floors high, it's haute cuisine and then some. Here are staff of 38 work on each meal, 20 of them chefs producing dishes to impress the most fastidious gourmet 
ranging from smoked eel to caviar and lobster thermidor. Florida cocktail to a special entrecote steak for two called Tour de Ronde. It's the international level of the post office tar, where a third of the chefs are French, another third Italian, and the head chef Spanish. And they pursue their art in a kitchen the shape of a ring, with hardly enough space to swing a cleaver or a rolling pin. Orders are transferred to the restaurant two floors down in miniature high-speed lifts set in the central area of the tower. And while the chefs work, sightseers queue for room at the top. On average, 4,500 people a day take the vertical ride to the three observation galleries just beneath the restaurant. There's priority in the lifts for diners on the way up to the restaurant. And if the attendant's specially designed uniform caps make them look like space flight conductors, <laughs> that's just what they are. These high-speed lifts climb at a thousand feet a minute. And if you're not used to vertical takeoff, there's always a first time. The viewing galleries at a vantage point three times as high as Nelson's column with views over a 15 mile radius of Greater London, the Greenbelt and parts of Essex, Surrey, Kent, Berkshire and Hertfordshire. And way down there, the Senate House and London University with the Barbican development in the background. Up here in this world of panorama, the clear view depends as much on these men as on the weather. Keeping the tower's windows clean is a big job, with 50,000 square feet of glass to look after. And the window cleaner turns the restaurant's rotation to advantage. He has the triple glazed windows come round to him. Under the restaurant floor, the precision mechanism that keeps the restaurant going round. The clearance between the moving and static parts of the floor is just one eighth of an inch. Here, the mechanism comes in for regular inspection and maintenance. The gears are checked, the 48 rollers greased. It's a simple rack and pinion system. And what keeps 50 tons and more of restaurant on the move is a compact two horsepower motor. The tower and its restaurant are open seven days a week and close only on Christmas Day. Businessmen use the restaurant for entertaining customers, often from overseas. At night, it's often a rendezvous for celebrities, including royalty. And diners are so captivated by the views that they linger longer than in most restaurants. Last orders are taken up to half an hour before midnight, but diners regularly pause over their coffee until the early hours, watching the lights of London go out for the night, somehow feeling the pulse of a great city, enjoying the afterglow of a meal that you might say was on the town.